Hello, it's been a long time. I've only got five subscribers, but you guys are the fabulous five. <laughs> uh, I've been busy uh, making the website ProWrestlingReviews.com. Uh, I'm slowly getting a lot of things added to that. Uh, Pay-per-view reviews, uh, dynamite reviews, uh, dark reviews, uh, general information about the AEW promotion, all the cards and the dates and the venues they're in and the cities and stuff like that. I'm also adding that for Impact Wrestling and and also uh, NXT. It's a work in progress, but it's, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, in the very first beginning, uh, it's humble beginnings. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what I'm going to do today is review the October 2nd uh, episode. The review for the October 9th and October 16th episode will be coming out today as well. And uh, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about each match. I'm going to talk about observations and where it can lead to. So the first match I want to talk about is uh, Sammy Guevara and Cody Rhodes. Of course, Cody Rhodes won the match. But I was very surprised at uh, Sammy Guevara. And, you know, uh, I really should have reviewed this, like, as soon as the episode is done. Because when I say this, a lot of people is going to say, oh, you're just saying that because he talked about how great he was. But... Sammy Guevara really reminded me of Randy Orton. He really did. Like, when he came down, he I don't think he had the panda thing with him. Or did he? I don't know. I don't remember if he did. But anyway, he came down to the ring, and when he started wrestling, he totally reminded me of uh, Randy Orton. Like, how built he is for his size. Like, not a brick shithouse, but he's very conditioned, you know? And uh, he's so talented in the ring. I never thought he had that much talent, to be honest with you. That was very surprising. Um, he was toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Cody Rhodes throughout the whole match, like arm drags, uh, snap suplexes, and he doubled out the ring. And, and uh, the moon, uh, I, I think it might have been called the moonsault. He uh, dove off the <clears throat> top rope, landed on his feet, Tried again and then tried a third time and actually landed on him. Uh, I've seen that a couple of times now. I think that's one of his signature um, spots or signature transition moves, so to speak. But uh, I think it takes quite a bit of agility. And uh, I, I thought that match was very solid. Very solid. Not too much with the diving and the luchador or cruiserweight high-flying style. There was some of that, definitely. But there was also uh, some good technical wrestling in there as well. Uh, I, I thought that match was really good, you know, uh, definitely. Off the top of my head right now, I'd give that match like an 8 out of 10, definitely. But uh, when they uh, when AEW said that they're going to be making stories happen in the ring, it makes sense. Because Sammy Guevara then went and joined... Uh, he went there and joined the Inner Circle... And because he lost here, because he lost here to Cody, who is part of, I think he's part of the elite. See, that's another thing. I just want to side tangent here. I wish they would come out and say who's in the elite. I really wish they would. That's going to be in the second part of the video. But anyway, Sammy Guevara lost to Cody Rhodes. And then he it's later revealed he's part of the inner circle, which in my own opinion is AEW's version of the NWO. To me, but again, that's for the second part of this video. So that opens up a, a feud. That opens up a feud between the two, and because he's with Chris Jericho and Jack Hager and uh, Santana and Ortiz, then it, it totally gives him an in. So this this match being scheduled in the first episode and this happening on, on the second episode when it was actually revealed. It creates a feud because of this match, and it leads into this perfectly, especially with how good he was. Like, you think, I like Joey Janela a lot, but I really don't see how it could have worked with him. Darby Allen is too much of his own guy. Uh, Jimmy Havoc is too chaotic, really, and hasn't had much connection with any of the members of the Elite yet. So, I think uh, Sammy Guevara was the best choice. Um, so... That, uh, that match, I'd say that's 8 out of 10. This match here, uh, MJF versus Brandon Cutler. There's nothing much to say about it. 
it started off decent. Brendan Cutler was a bit slow on his moves. There was one part where uh, MJF was he was down like this, and the ropes were here, and Brandon Cutler was here, and then he dove over and grabbed them and flipped them over. But it looks like MJF had barely managed to keep his arm under his leg to to finish the move. It almost looked like he botched. Kind of hard to say who was responsible for that. I, I think sometimes if they manage to finish the move, even if it's not 100% spot on, it's okay. I mean, like one of us try to get in the ring and do that, right? Uh, most of us can't. But Brandon Cutler definitely botched. He definitely botched the end of that match uh, by slipping off the top rope and hurting his knee. It really looked like he tweaked his knee a bit. Like, there is no way anybody is going to convince me that when he got on the top rope and slipped and landed on his knee, it looked like he landed fine, but maybe he landed at a weird angle or put too much tension on it or something. I don't know. I'm not a sports trainer, but even the commentary, I think it was Excalibur, said he landed on it, uh, he slipped off the top rope, and then he hobbled his way across the ring to MJF, and then MJF kind of just knocked, uh, took him down to the mat, and then put an arm bar on it, but his his arm was kind of like, kind of like that, it wasn't even straight, like, I think, I don't know if they have earpieces in the referees, or, or with the wrestlers, or something, somehow like that, what WWE has, but this match was definitely botched. There's no way anybody's convinced me that the way this match ended with, with Brandon Cutler slipping off the top rope, then up like plain as day hobbling across the ring, and then getting knocked down and submitted in an armbar. No one's going to convince me that that was planned. No way. Definitely not. Because he didn't wrestle the week after that. He wasn't, or even on the dark matches. And then this past week on the 16th, he did match. Uh, he did have a match. With the dark episode, um, you can go and look at the results. I'm not going to make a spoiler there. So that one there, I give a 2 out of 10. That match was pitiful. It, it could have been really good. Uh, even for the action that happened before the botched ending, it was just a lot of diving. It was just a lot of flips. There wasn't any technical things. There wasn't any like Russian leg sweeps or... Uh, uh, any submissions except for the one at the end that was just added in to clearly end the match because of the botch. There, I don't remember any power bombs or pile drivers. Or maybe there might have been some kind of DDT thing. I don't quite remember, but uh, it just seemed kind of like a lot of a lot of running, a lot of jumping, a lot of flipping. Uh, I find that a bit too much. And uh, AEW seems to be changing a little bit in the last couple of episodes. Especially the, the last episode, the third episode, there was more technical wrestling involved, a little bit more. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about that at the end of this review. Then Pac defeats uh, Hangman Page. I like Pac a lot. He doesn't seem to be getting a pop from the crowd. When he comes out, he like the first couple episodes, um, I don't know if he wrestled on the second episode or not. But uh, on the first episode, he wrestled against Hangman and he came out and he didn't do much. He didn't say anything. Like he came out on the top and he's like Ugh, like that. And he came down the ring. That looked really cool. That little thing he did. But he didn't really interact with the fans. And the fans don't seem to be popping. They don't seem to be reacting. It seems like he's getting a pretty neutral response from the crowd. Which is, I hope AEW ignores that. Because he's great talent. He's, he's, he's a very serious type of guy. Like he kind of reminds me of Ken Shamrock. In a way, I'm not saying he could fight in actual MMA the way Ken Shamrock does. I'm just saying his his he's obviously crazy working out. Like every part of that man's body looks solid, and like he's very intense. And he doesn't say a whole lot. And when he does, he's straight to the point. Kind of reminds me of Ken Shamrock a bit. But uh, I hope he can develop some kind of personality, even the seriousness of himself. Drive that in a way where it gets people's attention. I think he needs to try to get a reaction from the crowd a bit, which he tried to do on the third episode in that, when he was looking at the camera. Kind of cool. Kind of like, what are you going to do when he was at the top of the ramp? So that was cool. Uh, that little spot was nice. He needs to do more of that. But anyway, he won this match. And then uh, on the third episode, uh, he lost... A tag match. He lost a tag match, which involved Hangman Page. 
And then recently there was an interview with Hangman Page. Uh, it was on YouTube where he, uh, uh, the interviewer said, how do you feel to hand Pac's first loss in over two years? To me, to be honest, Pac doesn't give a shit about tag. He doesn't. I don't think he does. I mean, when he's put in a match, he does try to win it. But if he had his choice, he wouldn't be fucking around with tag matches. I don't think that Pac cares about tag matches. He's more of a singles guy. He's a singles competitor. And the fact that he was involved in the match that also involved Hangman Page, who wasn't on his team, by the way, obviously. <laughs> like, uh, like, obviously, even the tag match he was involved in illustrates that point. It, it only happened for a storyline uh, continuation, but we'll get into that when we review the, the October 16th episode. But anyway, as far as this goes, Hangman Page was asked, how did it feel? And he's like, well, did I beat him or did, you know, or, or did the other guy beat him? It's true. Hangman Page didn't beat Pac. Moxley caused the loss. He did. And it's a tag match, man. Pac does not care about tag matches. He doesn't. Pac only cares about singles division. He'll try to get the win, but I guarantee you he would never opt to go into the tag division. Um... So really, I don't really care about that loss. I'm a Pac fan. I don't care about that loss. I don't think he cares about that loss. He wishes he would have won, but he doesn't really care. But anyway, this was a very solid match, man. It really was. I give that like a 9 out of 10, definitely. There was a lot of technicality. There was a lot of uh, like power moves. Uh, the dives and the somersaults that was happening... Uh, and the moon salts it, it, they they fit where, where they happened it fit the match it wasn't just putting yourself in a position so it could be done uh, the intensity was high it was real um, very solid power match with mostly heavy hitting impact moves rather than high flying dives and and uh, flipping and stuff like that so that match was more of a technical ground power match. I don't remember seeing one submission in it, only at the very end when Pac uh, got the brutalizer on Hangman in the corner uh, closest to the bottom of the ramp. And uh, he submitted Hangman Page, or Hangman Page passed out, so to speak. Which I think is a good idea because it gives the win to Pac, but at the same time it saves face for Hangman uh, or the wrestler who he's going against. So... So that seemed to continue, that seemed to create a feud, because Hangman Page, he's the biggest workhorse of AEW. I mean, he had that match against Pac before, double or nothing, to, which to me should count, but apparently doesn't. And then Hangman Page was booked to win the Men's Casino by the Royale. He did, he won that. And then he won at Fighter Fest, a triple threat match. Uh... You know, and, and then he won at Fighter Fest. He lost that. Uh, he lost it all out. You know what I mean? Like, and then the first episode, as far as the TV episodes go, he loses the first match. So I can understand why he'd be pissed off. He put in that much work and that much effort. You know what I mean? Uh, before Double or Nothing, and then Double or Nothing, and then Fighter Fest, and then Fight for the Fall. And, those are four things he was involved in. So if you owe this, owe that, you know what? It was singles competition. It was within the singles competition realm. If you count those things, it was, he, was, he did it. It was in the singles realm. It counts. He was 4-0 and oh, if you count the match before Double or Nothing and if you count the Casino Battle Royale win. If you count those, he was 4-0 oh going all out. He lost that all out, which makes sense. Um... He's too new. He's uh, he may have be a lot really experienced in, in in the wrestling industry, or at least have five or six years. But the point is, on national television, he's relatively unknown. But that's a whole other story. The point is, he was four and going to all out. He lost to all out. Okay, he was four and one, or two and one. To me, in my mind, it should be four and one. But whatever. The point is, on the very first episode, he loses the puck. So he's obviously really pissed off and wants to turn things around. And that makes sense to have that feud. That's a relatively neutral feud, though. I mean, this is a very hot feud. To me, that's a hot feud because of this, and because of their ten, because of their their tension with the elite, and because of and because of Jer uh, Cody's match with Jericho at uh, at uh, 
full gear. And Sammy's involved with all that. So to me, this is a hot feud, right? Because there's quite a bit of, quite a bit involved, right? Sammy Guevara is involved with the Inner Circle, who is created and run by Chris Jericho, who is the world champ, who can't stand the elite, and as far as I can tell, despises pretty much everybody. And is, uh, Chris Jericho is having a match with Cody Rhodes. And all of that is interconnected. There's a lot of possibilities there. So that's why I call that a hot feud. To me, this is... I wouldn't say cold feud because there is at least... But then again, a feud has to have at least one match. To me, this is a cold feud. To me, that's a cold feud. And to me, what a cold feud means is that you don't really see how it can continue. You know what I mean? How can it continue? I don't see how it can continue much. There was only one match where Hangman lost fair and square. Like, this year, Sammy Guevara was shaking Cody Rhodes' hand, and then Jericho came down behind him and knocked Cody Rhodes over. Obviously, Sammy Guevara was setting him up, right? And then Sammy Guevara's ties with all this stuff, like I said. That creates a hot feud. There's a lot of possibilities. To me, this is a cold feud. It was a fantastic match, but... If you look at the, the Hangman page saying he has to take Pac down and the tag match didn't really count because it was Moxley who won, caused Pac to lose, not him. Like, but all that is based on one match. It's just one match. It is a normal match that Pac won. I don't see how that creates a feud. You know what I mean? Like, to me, a lot of people say, oh, AEW doesn't have storylines. Yes, they do. Go on YouTube, being the elite, the road to the promos. Uh, AEW is using social media. They're using YouTube as the storyline platform. And then, because everybody's got a cell phone. Anybody can just, you got a minute here, you got a minute there, you got five minutes, you got ten minutes. Just jump on the channel, watch an episode or two, uh, watch a little video or two. Or whatever, and then you get caught up on the storyline. When the Wednesday episode comes, it can focus on the matches. I love that. I prefer that. I mean, you get a three hour SmackDown, you get a half hour of wrestling if you're lucky. Pretty much. Anyway, Brock Lesnar defeating uh, Kobe, Kofi Kingston. I believe it was Kofi Kingston. Um, in like six seconds or some shit. Like, that's fucking stupid. Anyway, to me that's a cold feud. It comes out of on the hinges of Hangman losing one match fair and square. And there's no other real connections. That's a hot feud, that's a cold feud. That was 9 out of 10. Very solid power match that happened. It, it was great. There wasn't a lot of high flying. There were some spots, a lot of power moves. I wish I would see more power bombs in the AEW. That's one thing I want to see. A th a th one thing I will give Nyla Rose credit for, she does a lot of power moves that you don't see any of the other wrestlers doing. Like, I haven't really seen hardly any other wrestler do a sidewalk slam or a power bomb. I love the power bomb. I wish we would see more of them. Like, you'll see certain moves where a guy will grab him, the guy will have his hands like this, he'll grab it off the floor and stand up and slam him on the ground or some shit. But th that's not a traditional power bomb. Traditional power bomb is where the guy's like this between the guy's legs, and you pick him up and you slam him. That's a traditional power bomb. That's cool. I wish we would see that. The only one I remember seeing doing that is Nyla Rose. But anyway, that was a good match. This match here, Rio and Nyla Rose, that was surprising. I never thought they could make it believable, but when I sat back and watched this match and I put my own observations aside and stuff like that would like what I mean but but that is the size difference and a power difference I do not have anything against Nyla Rose at all I think she's where she is because she deserves it no comment on um, Nyla Rose being in the women's division she's that's no comment she's where she is and deserves to be where she is okay that's what I'm saying anyway they made it believable. It was very hard for me to believe Nyla Rose was going to lose because of her size and power. But Rio did win the women's title. Which was very good for AEW because there's a lot of people out there who, for their own personal viewpoints, let's say, think that Nyla Rose shouldn't be in the women's division. So... Some people think that Rio won because AEW realized that and didn't want to backlash from fans over that, which is not fair. 
but AEW is just starting off and they can't they can't afford to anger a lot of fans before they can get good with them as establishing a relationship. I think six months from now, the AEW will be able to stand back as a person. You know, think of that company as a person and the company can say, look at all what we gave you in the last year, you know. We've established ourselves to a point where we should be able to make who we want win and it's understood because we've established trust that we'll give you what you want. I think that's what AEW is going to do six months down the road. She'll probably win the women's title, but it's too early for Nyla Rose to win it right now. But uh, but anyway, the match was very believable. Uh, Nyla Rose's cockiness is what allowed her to lose. Because if Nyla Rose would have been focused the whole time, she totally would have lost. Like, there was one spot where she put all the chairs at the bottom of the ramp and put Rio on it. And then she flipped and landed on her back. But Rio moved out of the way and she landed on the chairs on her back. That would freaking hurt, man. Like, I don't have an actual... What do you I do? So you get a folding chair. Okay, pretend these pads are not here, okay? You get a folding chair. And they were all stacked against each other. And you got this lip. And she put them like this, somewhere the other way. The lot was like this. And you had like five or six chairs there. That driving into your back. It wasn't just one chair with one of these. Like, that spot would freaking hurt, which it did because she was like rolling around. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it was a very entertaining match, actually. It really was. Uh, the stomp, the, the diving double foot stomp that Rio was doing on uh, Nyla Rose. At first I thought Rio was a one trick pony, but now I realize she kind of has to do that in order to convince people that she can win over <clears throat> other competitors because she's like 98 pounds. I'm not a doctor, but I would, I would never th believe that a woman who's in her 20s or close to 30 or whatever like that, 25 to 35, could be 98 pounds and be healthy, but I guess she is. I don't know. Anyway, it was a good match. It was believable. Nyla Rose's cockiness is what caused her to lose. There was one point where she was... I, I believe there was one point where she was pinning her or went to pin her, but then she didn't bother or pull her up. And uh, she started toying with her a bit and that, and she started getting a, a bit too comfortable. And uh, I believe Jim Ross had commented on that at one point. I don't remember what he said. But uh, it was solid. It was hard hitting. It was high impact. Uh, Rio... Uh, in the end, did uh, a running, I think, uh, a running knee strike to uh, Nyla Rose's face, knock, uh, knocked her over and pinned her and won. And it really sold Rio as tough because she got sidewalk slammed, she got power bombed, she really got the crap kicked out of her, and she still managed to win. And when she kicked out, it wasn't like oh kick out, oh kick out. Like she sold that she was tired, she sold that she was beat up. You know what I mean? She, she sold the moves. It was really, really good, actually. I'm very surprised that it, this match was this good. I think that this match here was, to me, I'm going to say tied with the best women's single match we've seen so far with AEW. I, 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 like, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. And a lot of people are going to call me a, a, an insane idiot for doing that. But when you consider that that Rio is 98 pounds and Nyla Rose is not 175 or something like that. It's like Jim Ross said, she's she's well over 200 if she's an ounce. There's no freaking, yeah, she's over 200. She's definitely, she's definitely over 200 plus pounds. So there was no feud involved with this. Because it was a women's single match. The thing about Nyla Rose is that she's on a mission to try to prove to herself for her own personal reasons that she deserves to be where she is and she deserves the world, uh, the Women's World Heavyweight Championship. But that's like her own personal mission. That's nothing specific to Rio. But uh, anyway, that was a great match. It was a solid match. There wasn't a lot of flips. There was a lot of hard-hitting impact moves. Uh, there was a couple of flip spots. But overall, it was just a lot of reverses, a lot of slams, a lot of kickouts, uh, a lot of grit, you know. Gr uh, and uh, in the end, Rio won. Didn't really lead into a feud, but th that makes sense because Nyla Rose is like trying to prove herself in general. It's not specific to Rio, so that was great. Then finally, we get to Chris Jericho and Senate and Ortiz versus the Elite. I'm not fucking reviewing that. There is, I'm, I'm not reviewing that. If you want to review it, go. The thing is. There's no six-man tag 
championship title in AEW. I fucking hate that. I can't stand it. It's stupid. I don't like these matches. They're throwaway matches. Like, why have a, a, a six-man tag? There's no championship for it. It doesn't help you in the tag division. It doesn't count towards a, a regular tag team win, you know, in, in the four-man tag division, which has the championships, which is the only tag they should have, with the exception of women's tag. But there should be no six-man tag or any other shit, just regular tag belts, team of two, that's it. Anything else... That is a tag match. It's just a waste of time. And it doesn't count towards tag. It doesn't count towards singles. I don't care. When when this match actually started, I didn't really pay attention. I mean, I want to finish the show. I want to see the atmosphere. I want to see the fireworks. I kind of watched the match, but to be honest with you, I was just more like taking in the show at that point. If there's a tag match that involves more than four people, I'm not reviewing it. I'm not. I'm not. I won't. Unless they make a six-man tag team championship, which I friggin' hope they don't. I hope they don't. But if they do, then I'll review these matches. But overall, I would say this this first episode, I really liked the card because there was only one tag match. There's only one tag match, and I personally think that's the reason why the ratings went from... Of course, some people don't factor in the replay in Canada, which is bullshit. Because to me, you have to look at the total cable audience, not just the first you know, time they played it, but whatever, the point is, the very first episode was like 1. Uh, 1. 1.4, and the second one was like 1.1 1. 1 or some shit, or almost 1.2, and the third one was 1.014 or something, so the ratings have slowly decreased and decreased and decreased a bit, of course those numbers are different if you factor in the immediate TNT replay and TSN Canada, which you should, but, I mean, if you factor those in the first episode, it was 1.94 million. The second one was 1.63 million or something. And nobody has released the, the, the replay and the TSN uh, rating numbers yet. I can't find it. I've tried it. I've searched everywhere. I give up. But whatever. Anyway, uh, there was only one tag match, which is great. I think that's why. Number one, it was the debut episode. And at the same time... It was only one tag match, which is great, you know? So overall, I give this episode, I give this episode a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Definitely give it a 7 out of 10. It was great. The singles matches were excellent, except for Brandon Cutler versus MJF, but that was a botched match. I don't think it would have been all that great, even if it wasn't botched, to be honest. I didn't see anything from Brandon Cutler that impressed me. 7 out of 10. Um, I created two feuds. I created two feuds out of that. Two storylines came out of the first episode. Uh, Sammy Guevara uh, has a, uh, potentially has a feud with Cody. Or it tied him in to being part of the inner circle who was run by Jericho, who has a problem with Cody because of their upcoming match at Full Gear, and has a problem with all the other people, and especially the Elite, right? So, Sammy Guevara being a part of that kind of takes him into that, and that, and that creates a lot of possibilities where he's concerned. This is a cold feud. Hangman Page wants to avenge his loss, so he's kind of got it out for Pac. But the thing is, it's, it, it, it's just based on a, a normal match. It's not, nothing funny happened. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I don't see a whole lot to base the feud on. I mean, when it comes to sports, you shouldn't need a storyline. I mean, you look at soccer, you look at hockey, you look at basketball, baseball, like rugby, you know, English, soccer, anything like that. There doesn't need to be a storyline. You're fighting for the championship. It's competition, right? That in, in and of itself should be enough, which is enough for me. But at the same time, adding a bit of storyline does increase the enjoyability of it, right? When you have that, it's a hot feud because there's story behind it. When it's just wanting to avenge a loss, it's, it's a cold feud. It's only based on one thing. But um, just to make you make sense of that, because I will be using those two terms going forward. It was a great episode, 7 out of 10. Uh, the only other thing I can say about this episode is that...
The only other thing I can say about this episode is that the fireworks were good, but they weren't as great as I thought they would be. You know what I mean? Like, they need to do a bit more fireworks. Like, there was these... I, I saw on... I can't remember if it was the second episode or third. I believe it was the second. They had these things planted on the, the stage. And like, flames would come up like that, right? They should have that. You know what I mean? They should send off the fireworks and have the flames come up. And then they disappear and the other fireworks come up. And then they come back again. Like, kind of time it a bit. Uh... I remember Raw back in 2002. There's a video. Uh, it's the first Raw after Hogan uh, fought The Rock at No Way Out, I believe, when he left the NWO, which was stupid. He didn't have to leave. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they would have screamers, uh, like rockets, and they were like screeching, and they would come down and hit the two corners of the stage. Those were awesome. Like, AEW should have those. Like, they really should. That was an excellent idea. And uh, WWE hasn't done that since, like... WWE hasn't done that since, like, the early 2000s. Nobody will remember that. You don't have to have them coming down to the stage. You can have them going up like that. You know what I mean? Or you can have them coming down and light a fuse, which sets the rest of them off. But uh, I think that their, their fireworks needs to improve a bit. They need to incorporate a little bit more... Uh, still better than Raw's or SmackDown's, which was like all in a box. Like the, the thing was here and they had a roof and it was all in a little box. <coughs> and WWE is copying AEW T for T. If you sit down and watch it and observe it and look at the news articles and the timestamps on them, everything AEW is doing, WWE is copying. So if there's more awareness brought to that, then, then there's more chance that AEW will get the credit they deserve. But anyway, 7 out of 10, great episode, straight to the point. Uh, there was only one part in the ma in the episode where I wasn't involved with storyline. It was right after the botch MJF and Brandon Cutler match with a Jay and Silent Bob down on ringside and the hybrid two, which are massively underrated and totally got shafted uh, for the tag team championship tournament. And in my opinion, they should be the first ones to challenge for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. They should be getting a title shot. But anyway, that's that's my opinion on that. Anyway, they had Jay and Silent Bob and the Hybrid 2 came down and kind of got in their face and that. And then Private Party came down and kind of like broke it up or whatever. And then uh, SCU and Lucha Brothers came out on the top of the ramp and fought against each other and that. That's, I think the Hybrid 2 was supposed to happen. But the SCU and uh, and Lucha Brothers, I think that was added in because the MJF Brandon Cutler match got botched and ended way too quick. Three and a half minutes. AEW is not going to have a match that's three and a half minutes. Tony Khan has already said he feels very strongly about long matches, which I love and I hope they don't get rid of. But uh, I think that a CEO Lucha Brothers skit on the top of the ramp was added in to fill in the time, which kind of worked out anyway because Lucha Brothers came out and, uh, you know, attacked a CEO on the third episode. So it kind of helped develop that feud. Um... I'm going to predict that the finals is going to come down to SCU and the Lucha Brothers. But because Kenny Omega just won the the AAA Mega Championship, which I'm assuming is their highest championship, and he lost, uh, and he won it from Phoenix, Ray Phoenix of Lucha Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, the Ray Phoenix was holding the, I think the AAA tag titles and the AAA biggest title. Which he now lost Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is basically the AAA World Heavyweight Champion. And because Phoenix agreed to lose that title to Omega, I think the Lucha Brothers are going to win the AEW World Tag Team Championships. I think they're going to do that. Definitely. I can see that happening. And I and the tag tournament ending on the thirtieth of October, and then having another episode, and then after that episode having full gear, I'm going to predict that full gear is going to be mainly singles matches. There's going to, it's going to have to be, it's definitely going to have to be. People are tired of the singles matches. 
I mean, no, sorry, sorry. People are tired of the tag matches. I'm fucking sick of tag matches. I mean, I like them in that, but that's all I see, man. All I see. How are they going to develop individual stars when you're having nothing but tag matches? I'm sorry, but when people talk about wrestlers being good as singles uh, tag wrestlers, I don't think of Matt or Nick Jackson. I don't think of Angelico. Jack Evans, maybe. As like a light heavyweight or something. Like, I, I, I don't look at, like, Stu or, or Evil Uno as, like, great singles competitors. I look at them as great tag team competitors, but I don't think of them as singles competitors. They're not developing singles competitors. Like, I, re they, I really believe that the 30th is going to see, well, it will show the end of the tag tournament and crown the, the, tag, the first AW Tag Team Champions. And then I think the episode after that, there's going to be a tag title defense to get that out of the way. But I really believe that Full Gear is going to be mainly focused on singles matches, which is good, which they need to do. I think I, I think that as soon as these tag titles are, are, are won and, and it's settled, I'm going to predict that the first episode in November of Dynamite is going to see a spike in ratings because people are going to know this, the tag the term is done and we, they have tag champions and people are going to be tuning in interested to see okay now that that's out of the way what are we going to see happen what's going to start happening in the singles division which is true anyway october 2nd episode those are all the possibilities those are all the connections i i, I personally think of um seven out of ten fireworks need to be done better there wasn't any bullshit that didn't involve matches except for one skit or two after the MJF Brandon Cutler match, but I think that was added in because Cutler obviously botched his knee or some shit and match ended early. There's no way anyone's going to convince me it was supposed to end that way because it would be stupid to do that. Good episode. All in all, good episode.